Hello everybody, tonight it's Nail Talk Live coming from the heart of the Netherlands to the heart of the nail technician and today we're going to talk and discuss wedding nails, bridal nails, nails that you make for brides to be. And we have a lot to, to do tonight. Yes, we sure do. We have, of course, our Charissa Klein, and she's going to make a very feisty bridal nail. Uh, it's beautiful, made with power gel and crunchy inside. And Miriam shows some beautiful flowers. Wow, look at that. Yeah, with and rhinestones and pearls. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Yes. And what else? Uh, Jessica is going to show us two great designs. One with Baroque curls with a sugar effect. And a rebel chick, really cool design. It's really Jessica, eh? It's Jessica, yeah. Yeah, with yes. With pingle pong pingle pong and a bow <laughs> and a little bit tattoo inspired. <laughs> and you are here now for the second time? Yes, I am. Unfortunately, Aukje is ill tonight. So you were, we are very happy that you were yeah. able to take over because you had to reschedule all your clients. Yes. Even one but of my colleagues is now not able to do her nails tonight. No. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Anouk. <laughs> <laughs> but all of this because together with Magnetic, you can create magic. Let's start. So the topic tonight is bridal nails, and perhaps we are a little bit early or late in the year to discuss bridal nails? Hmm, well, I think this is just the right time, because you need to prepare for the next season, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and the yeah. bright season starts in March? Uh, yeah, most of the time, yeah, March. It's around March until October. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very l big season, and I know it because my husband was a, a wedding photographer. Oh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I know exactly when <laughs> the season started it and when it ends. Um, but yeah, but it's good. I think it's the best way to already prepare yourself uh, during winter times. So you know what you can expect and what you can offer, like making examples or... Um, um, practice. Practice or maybe... Um, to get some different kind of arrangements or, yeah. yeah. Uh, if here in Holland sometimes you hear that people also work together with for bridal shows and, and with bridal boutiques and do you do a lot of work with brides? Um, no. No? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a lot of brides mm -hmm. uh, s because I'm uh, really fully booked mm -hmm. uh, and most of all a bride comes for one time, maybe two. Um, so I don't really have time for them. So you don't make time for the one one time appointments. Sometimes, but uh, most of all, I send them to Melissa, my colleague. Ah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good for <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> uh, brides, at least in my experience, I had a lot of brides in my salon, mm -hmm. and it was always a discussion: what is more important, the nails or the the dress mm -hmm. or the setting, the entourage. And uh, in my salon, it was always the case, the nails were most important. Mm -hmm. what, I what is your experience? I think it's very personal. It very depends on what kind of personality you have, because mm -hmm. sometimes I had indeed like brides that were really into the nails because they really had to suit with their, uh, with the whole look and maybe a little bit more than the dress. Yeah. So they really had to stand out. Um, but most of the time I had clients that actually they just wanted classy and you know, don't the, the dress should be in the picture and not mm -hmm. the nails. So, so the nails are a supporting actor? It's, yes, a supporting. And the dress yes, is the yes. main, main event? Yeah, main event. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I would be the, exactly the same. Well, I don't know. I would think I want everything to be this, the main event. Yeah. <laughs> You're not married? No. But if you were to get married, what kind of nails would you love to wear? I think baby boom. Baby boom? Yeah. Is that also what your brides, the, the ones that you do? Uh, the ones that I had were, were baby boom or French manicure. Mm -hmm. French manicure, and of course that brings us to you, yeah. because <laughs> you had French manicure on your nails. Yes, surprisingly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, the queen of French manicure had French manicure, but you yeah. didn't do them yourself. No, I didn't, because it was I was completely stressed out, <laughs> so I thought, you know... Were you a bridezilla? 
No. No? no. Just no. stress. <laughs> just stress. Just a little bit nervous and um, it's more than I guess everything okay, you know, just that, that but this gives a little bit of a, yeah. I don't know. Nervous tension. Nervous tension, yes. Uh, so I, I choose um, to let a colleague do my nails, yes. And it was a great experience, I it think. It was. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> was it your dream come true? Uh, eventually. The eventually it was, yeah. <laughs> it's difficult for us nail technicians to let somebody do our nails, I think in general. Yeah. That's something that we have to get used to. But then on your most important day, to have somebody else do your nails is always a little bit nerve-wracking. Yes. <laughs> uh, we have a beautiful photo because you did a photo shoot. Yes. For a vintage bridal session. What was the, what's the story behind what we see? Well, the story behind is because my husband, he did a lot of uh, wedding photographers and he was uh, gathering with a wedding planner. And uh, they were shooting for a um, wedding magazine in the mm -hmm. Netherlands and they needed a bride yeah. to be a vintage. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> so I was a whole day a bride, so uh, the nails... So you were the bride also yes, yourself, yes, so yes. it's you in the picture. It's me in the picture, yes. Oh, well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and the whole classic, like the color and the bouquet and everything needed to be very vintage. It was a lovely day and beautiful pictures, by the way. And you had a magenta color on your nails? Yes, magenta, yeah. So that, that just supports the fact that you can wear everything on your nails, yes. because everything can be bridal, but remember, bridal also means that it's a little bit more expensive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make a special bridal arrangement. Today we are going to show different variations of bridal nails, mm -hmm. different yes. versions, um, and you are going to show how to buff the, the nail. Yes, how to buff the nail, uh, but just on a very like short, uh, classic French nail, mm -hmm. and then just buff it up to high shine. Yeah. Yeah, because the shine, when buffed to a high shine, Nothing surpasses the beauty of, of a buffed high shine. I absolutely agree. Yeah. And it prevents lifting. So if you have clients in your studio that have a lot of lifting or clients that want the most natural look, then buffing the natural nail it is. Yes, absolutely. Do you buff na nails? No. So <laughs> this is going to be very educational for yeah. you as well. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. Because um, um, I did... 10 clients a day, yeah. and I think I have no arms anymore when I have to do 10 or clients a day. Or you have great biceps. Yeah. <laughs> like somebody <laughs> in our camera crew. Yeah. Well, that's a good discussion point, I think, because if you, uh, you are, um, when you're using your arms too much when you're buffing, yeah. then your file grid was way too low when you started it to file. If you keep your grids uh, and high, yeah. so you keep your grids high, then you will have uh, less um, arm pressure during buffing. So. so the coarser the file, the more pressure you need to push on mm. the nail mm. to get it to a shine, eventually. Eventually. Well, I think we will have to discuss that more in depth That's at very the tech table. <laughs> yeah. You will join us at the tech table, yes. so we're just going to have a fun evening, the three of us talking yeah. nails, buffing, French manicure, and perhaps not the most natural looking version is a design nail, mm -hmm. but of course I we know that you love to see designer nails. So let's have a look at Jessica and her Baroque curly design. When clients visit me to have their wedding nails done, then I tell them, look, in my case, it be, it's perhaps a little bit different, but I think that the nails should be the last finishing touch. The dress, the wedding dress is what counts, and the nails are just an accessory, the finishing touch to the look. So normally, I would take a subtle Jessica design just like something I'm going to show you today. For the background, I used nail plate extender and I applied it in the sticky layer of the chameleon flakes. I love the chameleon flakes and I've cured these chameleon flakes for 10 seconds to set them. Chameleon flakes are available in many colors, but number 54 and 55 really have the highest shine because I want to use them underneath the matte top gel. I'm first sealing the chameleon flakes with base and top and then I apply the extreme matte top gel. This really makes the ice crystals shine and shimmer like never before. 
even though it's underneath the extreme matte top gel. It's a great effect. So I'm going to create a curly design with Baroque curls. I'm using my detailer number three brush, which is a fairly big in combination with the fresh brush. The detailer number three has natural hair and the fresh brain has synthetic hair. The natural hair absorbs a little bit more so it's easier to make thicker applications and I'm starting my curly design, my baroque design, from the upper left corner of the cuticle and I'm working my way down in a slight diagonal to give the nail design a softer feel. So the beginning of the curl, of the sweeping curl, is a little bit thicker and then from this thicker part you angle it backwards towards the main branch of the design always make sure that you work with your brush perpendicular to the ceiling and I'm using a little bit more liner white gel than you're used for me because I'm going to sugarcoat these curls that I'm making now I'm choosing my fresh brush to add the small detailing lines to my design. I didn't cure anything yet because I want to do this after I applied my glitter spray in the wet gel. As you can see the line of white just stays. It doesn't run so your design still keeps. Just create a little bit here and there and for visual interest and I'm also adding a little bit of white dots here and there. Normally this is the last step of the design because now you just fixed areas of the design that needs a little bit more interest. Now I'm going to use a glitter spray, a mermaid glitter spray and I'm going to spray this over the design so I'm going to do this like if it was a client I would put her nail into a cup to receive the excess glitter. Now I'm just going to spray in free air with my spray so it's going to look quite spectacular but I mean on TV that's cool. So I'm just spraying it in the liner gel and l let it absorb. So sometimes you need to spray it once or twice. This needs to be cured for one and a half minutes in the twin light and then the design is finished but it needs some rhinestones and some pearls that I will add on. So the design is ready and now I need to do the finishing touch, the extra pizzazz. I'm going to adhere my rhinestones and pearls with gemstone gel which is specially formulated for this. In this middle part I'm adding a little drop and I'm using my frosted white rhinestones as a centerpiece. We also have beautiful pearls, shiny. So I'm adding those here and there just to complement and finish the design. This design is beautiful on one nail, perhaps even on all nails or in combination with French manicure on the upper nails. This is the end result. Beautiful, quite simple and elegant sedate feminine nail art. But if you know me a little bit better then you know that I always want to have something extra and I will show you more Jessica design in my next demo. Wow, if I ever going to marry, I would like to have this Baroque design on my nail. Well, I'll know. do your nails for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I hope that will convince you. Okay. <laughs> then I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Debbie, um, what are you yeah. going to show us? Um, well, I'm going to show, like we discussed before, I'm going to show uh, a short French manicure, but not in the reverse way, like in the old-fashioned way. Um, it's not old-fashioned, it's traditional. Uh, I think it's very hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, that's why reverse technique came in several years ago. Uh, however, sometimes I do feel it's the most natural one. Uh, and in this case, because you're a man, 
I yeah. decided it. A natural a looking French natural. <laughs> That's <a> totally <laughs> suits you. <laughs> well, everybody knows that papine is really, uh, you, you can wear anything on your nails. But today it's going to be um, yeah, a natural French manicure. Okay. Yeah. I never really understood the whole reverse thing in the beginning. I, I thought to myself, why don't you just do a French out of your well, hand? I, um, in the beginning, I totally agree with you on that because I, I just, you know, and it was about the covers, but then I just put my smile line in a traditional way and mm -hmm. I put the cover against it. Yeah. However, when you're doing reverse, it's a little bit of balancing your product a little bit different. And when you're doing it in, in reverse, it's easier um, to build up the nail in a different way, especially when you have very uh, long nail beds and elongations that are very long. Yeah. Um, reverse with a short nail, I don't like it because you see that like a lot of product, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. um, it's built up at the smile line point yeah. where your product should be at the apex point. And you see when they do reverse that all the product is at the smile line. And so they have to thin it out uh, Yes, yes. And uh, you know, have to fill it up so it's going to be the hairline is thicker. So that's yeah. why I, I do prefer to do traditional way on short nails. Do you ever work in a traditional way with French manicure? No. No? No. Never? Never. Okay, well, then <laughs> let's have a look at what, we, what Debbie is going to show us. You already prepared the nail. Yes, it's I did. It's primed. It's primed. Uh, it's prepared. Uh, I pushed back uh, the cuticle a little bit. So um, I'm ready. I'm okay. going to work with natural white and natural pink. So it's going to be a very natural looking, uh, le looking a nail. A soft look. A soft look, yeah. Of course, mixed ratio is important. You're going to work with acrylics. Yes. Prestige acrylics. And of course, here the key is not to take too much of the white. Yes. And don't take it too wet because then it drops down underneath the natural nail. Exactly. So I'm going to put it down. And I start always in the center of the nail. Mm -hmm. And turn it around. It's a very healthy looking natural nail. <laughs> but that's just because of uh, I was working, working together with Yap, rebuilding. So. But you just follow the natural smile line. Yes, I follow the natural smile line, and then when I feel the product is setting a little yeah. bit, I'm going to push it a little bit further into the corners. What is important to note here is that you angle your brush in the corners of the smile line to push it into the natural nail, yes. instead of working it outside of the perimeter of the nail. Yes, exactly. And I really dry my brush before I'm pushing back a little bit of the smile line to get a slightly deeper look yeah and you create a little pocket yes do you like it when it's visually that the pink goes underneath the white or is it walled up against the white mm, i like it to be a little bit underneath because it makes your smile line sharper yeah, it gives a little bit shadow yeah Sometimes you hear people say shadow is a bad thing when it comes to French manicure, but it's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good There's thing. There's nothing better than a little bit of shadow behind your smile line to create the depth. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. And when you're doing your smile line, once you have set it, don't do this. Because push it back. Onto push it a, back a because if you make it flat like this way, you don't see what your smile line is doing. So if you really want to little flatten it a little bit out and make it more equal just follow the smile line you just have created or else your work is for nothing and is it important to file the natural nail in shape before you uh, put the application on it yeah that's a good, good question i will prefer to do that of course you always need to file a little bit afterwards but um, i prefer to file the natural nail in the shape, especially when they are very, very short. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it a, a lot easier. Yeah. And as you and can it's see, very thin. it's very thin. It's just enough wall to, um, yeah, to build up an apex against. So it's still yeah. credit card thickness. You can see here also that's even. Yeah. And on the hairline, that it's nice and thin. Yeah. Less filing. Less filing, because <laughs> the topic, of course, is buffing yeah. to a high shine, but that also incorporates not a lot of filing with coarse files, because the coarser you go, the more you need to fix to create a beautiful nail. Now oh. you're going to do the apex area of the nail. Yes. And of course, that's always a big debate. 
apex? Is mm -hmm. it at a cuticle or is it in the middle of the nail or is it just behind the smile line? It depends on the natural nail. Mm -hmm. Where do you prefer to have your apex? Uh, I'm old fashioned way. I love it in the middle. Yeah. Okay, let it settle. Pink. Yes. You don't start smudging it no. around, you just let it settle up. Yes, and first... Connect it to the natural nail, blend it in. Blend it in. Holding my brush downwards towards the cuticle, and then turn the finger up, and then push. Yeah, so you're angling the apex in. Yes. Like making kind of a reverse, but then just put it against. This type of nail has been very popular. Uh, this is really also an American style nail. Mm, eh? It is. This is the American version of French manicure that they wear in the streets instead yeah. of the very long French manicure well, nails. Well, actually, you, you will see this type of nail uh, on competition floor more and more as well, because the traditional way, making 10 nails equal, very looking very natural, it's very hard to do. Um, so yeah, and, and especially in, in the US, this is one of the most popular nails, yes. Yeah. The warmth of the nail bed makes it so difficult eh, to create a beautiful smile line. Yes. Because you have less time than when you work on the form, so you really have to know your product really well and the room climate around you. Mm -hmm. So you're now making a perfect uh, application around the cuticle area? Yes. Holding the finger angle down again? Yes, because I don't want to have any product going into the cuticle, so that's why I'm angling it downwards. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Uh, if you have a client who has spots on their natural nail, mm -hmm. what kind of product do you use? Well, you can, of course, uh, now I'm using just a natural pink. It's because there's just a light camouflage in it, but not too much. It enhances the, na the natural nail plate. Mm -hmm. uh, but if there are spots in there, you can choose to work with a camouflage, of course. But then maybe mix it with, um, with a natural pink or maybe with just a pure pink to get it... Uh, Semi-transparent. Semi yeah, yeah. So it will hide the imperfections of the nail plate, but you still get that beautiful uh, shining through that more depth into the natural nail. Yeah, and with some spots, of course, we don't use any color. If it <laughs> looks like a leopard, don't do anything no. with it. <laughs> You're now going no. to have it dry. Yeah. Um, of course, before we go to the next thing, important for a beautiful mixed ratio is that the nail also is really smooth after the application. Mm -hmm. You know when you work with acrylic that if it's like velvet smooth, that you use the correct mixed ratio. Yeah, yeah. And then it's only buffing lightly. Yes, if you have like a um, product that you can see that's little, it almost looks like dust that's on yeah. it, and you know you probably work too dry or maybe too wet even because you don't have a mix ratio. Yeah, yeah. the correct mix ratio. Well, yeah. I will start admiring this nail while it's curing and while we are waiting for this nail to cure, let's have a look at Shariza and her sassy bridal nail. Hello everybody, so nice that you're watching me. Today I'm going to show you how to create a sassy bridal nail. I already created a clear almond shape using Power Gel Clear. This is the almond shape and I'm going to create a French. I removed my form and I'm going to apply my nail bed. Just make the nail bed a little bit wider and make sure that it's applied at the upper corner of the smile line. From this position, I'm going to press and pull my power gel nude towards the free edge, creating the depth of the smile line, but leaving the corners quite high. Continue until you have reached the desired depth of the smile line and correct when needed. When you're happy with it and you want to make it a very even and sharp, Make sure that the product is very even everywhere. When you're happy, then now is the time to correct it. Remove the sticky layer of the product using prep and wipe. 
and I'm going to use my file, my emery board, to sharpen up the smile line. Leave the dust so that you can see where you have filed and that what the shape is. Okay, the nail bed has been applied and because I already considered the fact that I'm going to create a very thin nail, I'm going to use gel polish white as white to create my smile line. First, I'm whitening the wall of the product of the nude power gel, concentrating on the actual smiling wall. When you're done, cure for 30 seconds in the twin light. Now I'm going to apply white as white on the body of the nail and I'm using a detail in number three because then I have more product control than when I use the brush from the bottle. Be careful not to apply too thick because then you will get curing issues. It's better to use two thin coats than one coat that is too thick and cure for 30 seconds. Now we have the perfect base, the perfect French manicure base and I'm going to make it sassy using the white sensation crunch that I'm going to apply into a little bit of base and top. I first use the base and top gel as a glue, as an adhesive layer so that I can fixate my white sensation crunch that I pick out of the jar with my detail number three. Don't apply too much of course. You can apply a lot, but use it sparingly and use it as a design. Discuss it with your bride, with your model. Around the French manicure smile line, I apply a little bit more and on the free edge I apply a little bit less. Do whatever you want. When you think that it's blinging enough, that it needs to be cured, 30 seconds in the light. I'm going to finish the free edge using the standard Builder Gel Clear, which is a crystal clear builder gel that really almost magnifies the glitter effect. I prefer to apply this with the detailer number three because then again I have a lot of product control when I create the capping of the inlay. When everything is covered and you're happy, then we cure for one and a half minutes. When the nail is cured, I'm going to remove the sticky layer using a little bit of prep of wipe and I'm going to file. I follow my filing steps, concentrating on the free edge of the nail, so I work my way from the side of the nail upwards towards the apex. And I work towards the free, the free edge. Remove the dust so that you are sure that you are working on the correct areas, areas of the nail. When you're happy with the shape of the free edge, now we're going to focus on the cuticle area. I will do this using the expert bit at 30,000 RPMs. Be careful not to use the expert bit on the natural nail, but only on the artificial product of the power gel. Even out and also around the cuticle application and seal it into the natural nail. You can also use it to perfect your apex application. Be very precise so that the bulk of the filing, let's say 90% of the filing has been done and is okay. Remove the excess dust and check to see if you see high spots or low spots because these are going to re remove using my photoshopping file technique using a 150 grit zebra hygienic file. Very gently on the high and low spots to even everything out. Do not forget that you are already for 90% happy with the nail with, what, how, with how it looks like. So this is just perfecting the last 10%. Don't over file the nail. This is just photoshopping. Just feel the surface sometimes to check. When the nail is perfect, the surface is okay, then we're going to remove all the scratches using a white block in a round motion. Just take the whole nail and just buff everything out. Clean the dust and the surface of the nail with your dust brush and a little bit of prep and wipe. So two in one. When the nail is dust free, the nail is ready for application of the top gel. I want to use base and top gel in this case because it will keep the pink of the nail bed nicely pink and not purplish. 
So apply it over the whole nail and you will see the glitters pop out. I prefer base and top because the colors of the nail remain pink and white. Supreme finish will make it a little bit more purplish. My design is finished. I'm really happy with it. What do you think? Isn't it just the perfect solution for any sexy bride? French manicure elements shape, inlay design together with beauty. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. Next week I'm going to show you how to work with sugar effects and chrome. See you next time. Wow, what, what a nice wedding nail yeah, I with love less products. Yeah, 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 I yeah. really love this nail. If I was going to get married, I would either choose this or that. Or that. <laughs> either very natural <laughs> or very extreme. But what did you find most interesting in Sherisa's technique? Um, the the builder gel she used to cap the extension edge. Yeah, standard builder gel clear? Yes. Um, she used it for uh, because it's the most clearest gel we have. Mm -hmm. um, so it, when you put your inlay in it, then it's 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 like glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it works almost like a magnifying yeah. glass, really, creating the beautiful inlay. Yes. And what did you like? Uh, she's using gel polish. Yeah, <laughs> on the free edge you create French yes. manicure. I mean, yeah. that is so not how we were taught, of <laughs> no, course. Uh, no, no, no. That is completely <laughs> new for me, doing the inlay with gel polish. For me, it's still a traditional product. Well, I think it shows in, in how diversifiable uh, um, a gel polish can be. And by just using the gel polish for color and actually build the strings with a clear builder gel, yeah. I think that's a great idea. Well, what really uh, strikes me as amazing is combining the products, like you say, mm -hmm. clear builder gel, gel polish, power gel, and still have a beautiful, wearable and durable nail. So don't be shy of mixing products together, but just be your own creative self. So what is now the plan? Are you also uh, already going to Bob? No, I think not. I think no. you have something for us. Yes, we're going to Marianne Black. She's going to show us uh, great uh, bridal effects. Yes, Miriam Zwart with bridal effects and flowers, beautiful flowers. Today I'm going to show you a nice bridal design. I'm going to create a sugar effect base, not too glittery, with a hand-painted flower made with the liner gel white. The background I'm going to create with a one coat color gel, spicy cinnamon, and the gel polish negligee nude. I will create an ombre, after which I'm going to sugar this, and on top of this I'm going to paint my hand-painted design. The first coat, negligee nude, is applied over the entire nail. This coat will be cured for 30 seconds in the twin light. The second coat, I'm going to start with a darker color, a one coat color gel. And I'm going to create an ombre with the lighter negligee nude from the other side. Spicy cinnamon is a beautiful dark shade. Blend it out and down and don't apply too thick. And when you're happy with the end result, you're going to use the negligee nude. Take a little bit on your brush, work from the side towards the center and start blending the two in the center of the nail. Repeating the sweeping motion to blend the colors perfectly. In between sweeping, clean your brush to ensure that it stays pink and brown. I will repeat this a couple of times to make sure that it is not streaky but a beautiful, even ombre. Be careful to clean the brush of your gel polish before putting the brush back into the bottle to prevent contamination. This coat is cured for 30 seconds. I will repeat this step. But don't cure 
because this is the base where I will apply my sugar effect on. So don't cure. I made a mix of Prestige Crystal Clear Powder because I don't want it too glittery. And I added Mermaid Gold to get a mixed sugar effect with a semi-shimmer, not too heavy, and apply it over the wet surface. When you're happy with the effect, cure the coat for 30 seconds in the twin light. I will remove the loose particles with a soft dust brush and I will start my design with the liner gel white. I will first create the outline of my flowers, painting or drawing the flower, and then I will blend the white liner gel in towards the center of the nail to create a whole flower. When the drawing of the flower is done, then I will start blending using my detailer number 3. To make it easier, I will use finishing wipe liquid to blend everything more evenly. Don't use too much finishing wipe because this will make the blending more difficult. So blending from the outside towards the inside of the nail, making sure that the middle of the nail is still relatively dark. I will cure this for 30 seconds. The full curing time is one and a half minutes, but of course I will add more pearls, rhinestones and bullions. So I will first cure it for 30 seconds. The pearls, the rhinestones and the bullions I will adhere using gemstone gel. I will pick up the gemstone gel with the smaller detailer brush and I will apply the gemstone gel. I will add the elements of the design and with a wax picker I will pick up the rhinestones and the pearls and using the dotting tool on the other side of the brush to make the spacing more even and precise. I will also add bullions but I will pick these up with my detailing brush. Now the nail is going to be cured for one and a half minutes and this is the end result. Beautiful, modest, bridal nail with soft flowers and a beautiful shimmers in the background. Of course you can create different flowers and different backgrounds and different effects and different colors. These are just a few of my examples. These are without the pills and the stones and the other ones are with pills and some stones. So for every bride there is a solution but also for other clients. I'll see you next time. Wow, and I just love flowers, and um, especially the flowers Miriam made. The whiteness with the pastel colors, uh, amazing. But I'm going to show you how to file. But before we're going to do that, and how to buff, actually. But before we're going to do that, um, I have on the camera my files ready. Um, so I'm going to take you into the different steps. First, I have here the 180 grid file. Um, this is the file you can start with by mm -hmm. shaping or um, the edges, or maybe surface filing, surface filing if, needed. if needed. If you have like a little bit bulkiness here and there, you can use this one. Uh, I prefer to use one, especially when I'm going to buff and to high shine, is to use a 180 grid file that is already uh, been used a couple of times. Yeah, that's not really hygienic. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, but you're now talking about a competition. Trip, I'm talking about competition. Yeah. Or um, if you have like your own file system or like a file for each client, then you can use a file that you used one time before because it's yeah. crazy to yeah. throw them away after one yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a good thing, of course, with a used 180 grid is that's actually more a 240. 
yeah. it, it gets softer and softer, 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 so the scratches are less and less. Yes, exactly. Um, and then we have the buffer. Uh, it's a 220 to 80 buffer. And this one, um, yeah, it's just, you know, to get a more like equal surface around the nail and um, to remove scratches already a little bit. Okay. Yeah. To smooth it. This is a sponge buffer. A sponge so buffer. So it's a thick, sp and you use both sides, both the 220 and yes, the 280? Yes, I use both sides. Yes, yes. Okay. Not always necessary, but I do, yeah. I build it up in steps, and I'm going to explain later yeah. why I'm doing that. Uh, this is the next two files we make yeah. speci especially for you. Yeah, my babies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, this is a 340, um, and this is a 1500, and they're really belonging together. It's like brother and sister, mm -hmm. or two sisters or two brothers, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this one, yeah, it's, it's just removing the really fine scratches into the nail, but because of the, um, yeah, the really the heart, yeah, the core. The core in the core of the file, you can really press it and really remove all the scratches. Even if you have used maybe uh, um, maybe not a hundred file, mm -hmm. hundred fifty grid file, um, then still this one is your lifesaver. Yeah. Yeah, and even though like I'm, I'm going to show you later on because I um, already filed, but I put an application on the nail that really doesn't need that much filing. So I'm going to start with the 340 file. Um, and it's just beautiful for very thin nails and to get out the scratches and to refine. It really grips the surface. Yeah, and, and to really make it equal from, from, from your product all the way up to the natural nail. So yeah, it's a must have, absolutely. And then of course, because you cannot go to high shine when you have used this one, you still need the 5000 one. Because mm -hmm. with this one, you're able um, to put some oil on the nail and to really just, it's just the surface of the nail. When you're using the oil and buff it, it gets really smooth and mm -hmm. you get the scratches really out. It's like having an extra layer on top of the nail that smooths everything out. Yeah. And um, that is the most important step before you go into high shine buff. Okay, well, yeah. a lot of steps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but still. But still very fast, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's go. Okay. As we can see, um, into the nail, if you turn it a little to the side, you can see I have a little bit of product here, and there's a little bit of product here. It's not much. But we already have seen that it's very thin already and it doesn't need that much filing. Um, so if you do have a lot of product, you can use, of course, um, the 100 and grit, maybe I do just a little bit, just on top. Just where the smile line meets the natural pink. Yes. Just smoothing that little ledge yes. out. Up to the middle. Also, almost n you're not using pressure. Not at you all. You just let the file do its thing. Not at all. Yeah. And then turn it to the side again because that gives you the best sides. You can see it's already smooth. Smooth. Yeah. And I have a little here. And that's it. And isn't uh, not is it not important to file the cuticle area, the product? No, not with this. Uh, not when. Yeah, well, okay, let me <laughs> reverse <laughs> this one. <laughs> let me give you the right answer. It's very important to file around the cuticle area, but only if there is too much product around it. If you really smooth it in, just like I did with the application, mm, you just buff it. Yeah, yeah it's okay. already, already completely flush to the natural yeah. nail. So there is no latch. A good There's way you can, you, can, you can just feel with your nail, or you can use like a cuticle pusher and just feel around the area if it's completely loose. And if you feel any bumps here or anything that really holds your cuticle pushers, then you know that there's too much product and you need to smooth it a little bit more out. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to use a scratchless buffer. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start with the 220. Yeah. And I'm just gonna buff it. And I always use exactly the same steps. Steps. So filing upwards towards the center of the nail. Yes. So this uh, really enhances the look of the apex, the curvature of the natural nail. Yes. And then I go around the cuticle. 
with the buffer. Now we have the cuticle filing. Yeah. <laughs> The good thing with uh, buffing the natural or the buffing the acrylic like you're doing now is that it really almost melts together with the natural nail. Yeah. It almost becomes a real part of the natural nail, unlike a top gel, which is always on top of the nail. Yes. And unlikely, I have, um, when you have a nail that really has a curve and it's very long, you always need to file up towards the curve because mm -hmm. if you buff too much on top, you can actually lose your shape. Mm -hmm. um, however, this nail is very thin and it's like a layover. It's an, oh yeah. Yeah, so you can, if you just smooth it out and turn a little bit, a little bit of circles, you can also remove all the scratches. So you think normally, Wendy, that baby boom is a very natural looking nail, but I think we can agree that this is yes. like really natural. Yes. <laughs> Really. <laughs> now we go to the 340. Yes, I'm going to the 340. Um, this is a little bit, yeah, um, it's a stronger corn than the soft spongy, so it allows me to get a little bit closer to the cuticle. I, I also feel that it grips it a little bit better. Yeah, better, yes. So now I feel what you say, the cuticle area finding, I feel now that it's really filed. With this other one, it was like a soft motion, and now I feel. Yeah, it's more wrapping. Yeah. yeah, wrapping the product onto the natural nail. Always the side walls, Always. the corners of the side walls. Eh? Yeah, but not too much because it's already very thin and you don't want to file away your smile line corners. No, <laughs> I want to keep my <laughs> Debbie nail. <laughs> and then I go the other way. Still very gentle, very soft. So yes. your anxiety about uh, not having arms left <laughs> after buffing <laughs> your clients, that's really not, uh, no. not something that you have uh, to worry about. I'm working a little bit slower, of course, because yeah. we're on the camera. But yes, it's, it's a very soft touch, as you can feel. You really don't need too, too much pressure when you're doing this, because then you're finding a way um, uh, too much product, probably. And you are finding a way your shape. So, Debbie, if you want to finish the nails with a gel polish, mm -hmm. because you're doing a competition that is yes. finished with gel polish, up to which grit do you do the buffing to smooth out the surface? Um, well, uh, normally I will uh, use it up to the 340, but I don't use the sponge in between. Okay. So I just leave the sponge out of there and then well, just use the 340 because this will give you a really scratch. Of course, there are a little bit of scratches mm -hmm. in there, but not too much. So it gives you um, a, smooth, a surface. smooth surface and very beautiful. And the gel polish can still grip the e surface. Exactly, yes, yes. Just a little bit of correction. Yes, that's also important. Yeah, people forget to file the hairline. Yes. The very free edge of the nail when they do the buffing, because you have to take every part of the nail and just check it like you're doing now to yeah, make sure that it. it's uh, even. Really following the natural curve of the nail. Okay. Yeah. But now comes its brother. Yes, its brother. First remove all the dust. Very important because if you're going to buff with this one and there's still a lot of dust on top of the nail, you're going to press all the dust into the nail and that actually causes, gives you extra scratches. So yeah. you don't want that. No. And then I'm using oil, cuticle oil. oil. Yes. Seduction cuticle oil. Not too much. Just a little drop. And really rub it in. And this will act as a kind of uh, yeah, lubrication between the surface of the nail and your buffer. And my buffer. So that yeah. it really blends it in. Exactly. Yeah. So you don't need to wipe it off now because this one is going to really press it in and makes it high shine already a little. Perhaps an ideal high shine for a man? Can we yeah. go that far? Yes, I think you're absolutely right. A very natural look. And it's not possible to uh, rub the oil in with the ultimate shiner, right? With the white side. Well, if you... <laughs> 
you want to throw away your your file after one nail, yeah, then you need to <laughs> then you can do that. But no, it's because it's made of a different material that's not that resistant against oil. So you cannot really buff it in with your high shiner. You really need the 1500 yeah. grit in order to do that. What is also interesting to note is that the ultimate shiner, the high shiner file, the green white file, is a wax file. And using the oil in between will actually interrupt the high shining effect. And then you have to clean the file with a prep and wipe. But then in the end, there's nothing left. So again, you take the edges of the nail. Mm -hmm. So it makes it less sharp. And you see there's already like a little soft shine. In competition, the high shine is still essential? Yes, yeah? it's a must. Yeah. I remember absolutely. from the times that I was judging to see high shining cuticles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess then they take the cuticle in the shining process. I just love this sound. Yeah. <laughs> And already with the uh, the green side, it's like most of the time it's a 4,000 grit. Mm -hmm. And it's just to really... You you know, I have a fun fact that May, May Liang, the owner mm -hmm. of Magnetic, she was actually the very first person to introduce these white green buffing files in the market. And that was, I think, 15 to 18 years ago, oh. and she found them, and she was very enthusiastic yeah. about it. But it took a couple of years before they finally hit ground. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm very grateful because <laughs> this is one of my favorite files. <laughs> okay, so yeah. now the magic happens. Now the magic Let's happens. Let's go to Top Shot. Yeah, because and this is because you said you judge competitions and you saw all the cuticles that were shining. So please do not take the the high shine waxing file all over the cuticle. That's why I'm always doing this, because people say, are you just using this yeah. side of your file? Well, the first steps, yes. Mm -hmm. It's just to get close to the cuticle, but not waxing yeah. the cuticle. <laughs> so now you just focus on that upper two, three millimeters around yeah. the cuticle area? Yes. So and then, yeah. we're going to do this. And you see it a little bit in between, and there it comes. Wow. Wow. Let me go a little bit to the side. And that sound is also the sound of... Uh. <laughs> and with one buffer, you can really do a lot of clients, eh? Yes, you can do. Yeah, And absolutely. it's also a great retailing item, just in between, just uh, for everybody that has natural nails or family with natural nails. Yeah. Sell them an Ultimate China because it's great for home use. But let's look at this beautiful natural nail. Uh, maybe we should have used a little bit more of camouflage for your nail, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, but it, it, it's just my nail. <coughs> but just see the, see the shine. We don't need difficult lights to create the shine happening. It's just all there. Yeah. This yeah, is what Mother it. Nature gave me and what Debbie yeah. Hayanusa <laughs> enhanced. <laughs> enhanced, yeah, a yeah. little bit, a little bit, yeah. Beautiful, great, so inspiring, eh, don't you think? Yeah. Well, and it's not only for, of course, for uh, artificial nails, but especially when you're having men and they just want to have a shine, but not want to have something like a gel polished top coat on their nails, or just for their beautiful day, they want to have shiny nails, like for the wedding day. Um, then you can perfectly give them, uh, even sell them, uh, um, a high shine buffer. Yeah, yeah because it's <laughs> great for yeah. home use. Yes, uh, exactly. So they can, during the day, they can just, you know, polish their nails and make them more beautiful, even for the bride. Yeah. Yeah. Good tip. Well, I'm really inspired now by this beautiful nail. I mean, oh. <laughs> what is also very inspiring is, of course, Jessica, and she's going to show us a sassy bridal nail.
Hi, are you ready for my second design? I'm going to use the magnetic stamping plates because I'm going to create a more Jessica design. I'm going to use a stamping plate that Lizana from the art department developed for me with my favorite shapes and I'm going to create a design using these. Normally, I fill in or draw in the design with master paints, but today I'm going to use aqua colors. This is really fast, cool and easy. I prepared a nail. I used a nail plate extender and I buffed it to a dull surface. And now I'm going to stamp. I'm going to use my transparent stamp and my black next nail polish. I'm going to start with the bow, the main element of my design. Just apply a little bit of black, scrape, one, two, three, take your stamp, take your stamp up, look through it for precise application and boom it's there of course i'm using my nail polish corrector pen or my buffer to remove any excess underneath the bow i'm going to add my designs first i'm going to clean my plate with pure acetone be sure that there is no black left and then i'm going to clean my stamp using a clothing cleaner one, two, three, stamp, yes, and apply underneath the bow. It doesn't need to be precise because you can add and perfect your design using a little bit of black master paint. As you can see, a bow and my shapes is also great in tattoos. I'm also using a very small detailing brush and I'm going to work with my aqua colors directly from the bottle. But be careful, don't throw it or don't spill it because it's almost impossible to clean. So what I'll do, I'll take the brush out of the bottle and I'll take my little brush to the brush of the aqua colors to make sure that I have enough aqua color. This is the easiest for me. So I'm just taking a little bit and filling my brush with aqua color and then I'm going to draw inside the bow, filling it with the pink aqua color. The main benefit is that the lines of the stamping are a little bit higher because it's nail polish. So these fix the aqua colors inside the design so it doesn't bleed out, which is of course very easy. I'm going to add a tiny bit of shadow. Always make sure that you close your bottles of aqua colors because otherwise you will have a misery and take a little bit of black aqua color and I'm just adding the shadows underneath the bow. Just a drop here and a drop there, blend, blend, blend and a little bit underneath and also think that we need a little bit above the bow just to give it a little bit of dimension. And now the bow is almost finished. Oh my god, I forgot to use a little bit of pink aqua color in my main little rhinestone element underneath the design. How cute is this? Okay, well, I'm going to add my black master paint, the lines of the shapes that everything is connected perfectly and I'm also going to use my black to make sure that all the little pearls on the chain are even. And some I, I make a little bit bigger and some I make a little bit smaller just to create more visual interest. This is something that I do by feeling and then I'm taking my white master paint for the highlights. So I'm going to hit every single pearl on the chain just to give it a little bit of extra oomph. And then the nail is ready to be coated. I would prefer to do this first with a coat of base and top and then a coat of extreme matte top gel to protect the color. When you've done that, of course you need to add rhinestones, pearls, bullions, anything that you can think of. And then this is the result. So I place a rhinestone in the center of the bow and then to the cuticle area I add a little bit more using gemstone gel of course and this is just stunning something like this I would love to wear when I marry or just in general
Wow, what a great design, Jessica. Now we're going to talk about next week, because then it's all about glitters. Yes, my motto, yeah. when in doubt, just add glitter. Glitter. <laughs> <laughs> Do, you have oh. yeah. <laughs> Do you also have a favorite set of glitters? I'm very curious about, so s send it to me. You can send it to uh, info at nailtalklive.com. Um, <laughs> yeah, so send your favorite set of nails. Set of made nails, with yes. Glitter, <laughs> yeah. Just to, uh, sh and send it to info at nail Yes, .com. and then you can win the products Charissa used. Ah, oh, that's a cool prize. No, oh, cool. Yes, and it doesn't matter where you came from, everybody can win this beautiful prize. So let's go back to Debbie and Pepijn. Well, we don't stop talking anyhow. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> we are always talking. So, Debbie, buffing nails yeah. is an absolute must. At least the skill of buffing a nail mm -hmm. to a high shine. Yes, uh, I do actually truly believe that if you're a nail technician, you need to have to done this in a good way at least once. <laughs> One set and feel and see... Um, uh, what it yeah, what it does to the to the nail and also the wearability of the nail. Yeah. Um, just compare it with lifting, and if you're looking so close to a nail, then you just you know you, you get such a smooth and even application. I'm absolutely convinced that it prevents lifting. Yeah. Me too. I'm also convinced. Yeah. Well. Buffing a nail to a high shine is an absolute essential, a must when you do competition, as we said before. You are going to London this weekend yes. to just... Debbie just had an itch to do competitions again. <laughs> yes. And a lot of things have happened in the last week, but you're still going to London and I'm you promise going. to make some photos and videos. I will, I will. I will um, make some beautiful photos and maybe some videos uh, to let you see how the world of competition looks like. Yeah. With 850 competitors, I believe. 878. Oh my, yes. good. <laughs> okay, 878. Yeah, well, yeah. that's a competition. I'm curious to see what Debbie will show us next week. Next week, it's all about glitter, and I will show you to create an inlay design. I'm still not certain what, what shape and what kind of inlay, but it will be a very fun show next week. Thank you for watching, and see you next week, because we make Nail Talk Live from the heart of the Netherlands to the heart of the nail technician. See you next week. <laughs>